Dr. James Markham here with another Biblical Prescription for Life. I want to start out with a verse I've been studying in Philippians last month, and it's a wonderful book. Um, Philippians 4, 7 is a text I want to share with you this, this, this day. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I want my heart guarded. I want peace of God. This world is full of wars and rumors of wars, and here we have an answer. That's through Christ Jesus. This is what's going to give us the peace that we, we want. Well, today I want to talk to you a little bit about four tips, four or five tips for diabetes. Um, it's not fun to have a medical condition. Unfortunately, in this world, we all get old. We all have bad genes. Sometimes they get activated and turn on. Um, many of you realize that I have some diabetes in my life. Um, we have a family history of it. I don't make quite enough insulin in my body. So I've learned. And of course, dealing with diabetes through the years, you learn a few tricks. And in case you don't know these tricks, I wanted to share them with you. A lot of the times you'll go to the doctor and he'll talk a lot about, about the different medications. And there are some great medications depending on the mechanism of diabetes. And you really have to know what's causing your diabetes. Um, of course, everyone wants to work on an exercise program, eating a health diet, um, eating more plants. A plant-based diet seems to work best in sometimes reversing diabetes that in exercise. A lot of times that can take away type 2 diabetes. But I want to share with especially the long-time diabetics like me, in addition to diet and exercise, a couple things that might help you quite a bit. One thing that's helped me um, quite a bit is getting one of these special monitors. You know, it's no fun to prick your finger all the time and get your blood sugar. But now technology has improved, and I actually have this, this Libre on me, and it's a small device that you put right here in your arms, like a little patch, and it can stay there up to two weeks. And what you do is you just go here, and it, you can hook it up with your phone, or you have a sensor. You just hit your phone. Oh, got to hit the check glucose button first. Hit the check glucose button. There it goes, and that gives me my blood sugar. And what I can do is I can actually gives you a lot of data over time. And it gives me my average glucose right here. And for me, my average glucose over the last seven days was 116. Well, what I like about having this Libre, um, it's not hard to do once you get used to it. But for me personally, it's helped me a lot because I can tell which foods really spike them, when to eat, when not to eat. Um, it keeps me more accountable, and it's really helped me understand my blood sugar. Now, at 116, that's in hemoglobin A1C well below 6 in a good range. That's in the 5 range, and that's really, really good for me. Um, so that's one thing. I want to encourage you, if you can afford it or if your doctor will prescribe it for you, get one of these monitors. Um, you don't have to do it all the time. Sometimes you can just wear it a couple weeks at a time just to sort of get your routine, your rhythm, understand what foods really spike your blood sugar, how much, what time of days. Um, all that information is very useful, especially as you, you learn to take this diabetes thing seriously. Because if you don't take diabetes seriously, it literally destroys your body. Um, it hurts your nerves. It hurts your kidneys. It can hurt your heart. It can hurt every part of the body. Some of the initial symptoms are fatigue. You're tired. You're thirsty. Um, you know, you want to drink water all the time. Um, those are some common symptoms that you might be getting into diabetes, and it's very common. But if you can get on top of it early on, you can mitigate some of those long-term damages. In fact, when someone comes in with heart disease, one of the first questions I ask them is, are you a diabetic? Because we know that diabetes over a long period of time, if it's not well controlled, can damage blood vessels. So a monitor, very helpful. This is a Libre, but there's other ones out there. Um, the technology is just amazing. So that's one diabetic tip. Number two, this has worked very good for me and others. 
If you eat a big meal, get up and do a walk, move around. In fact, I found out using this Libre that if I walk, even if it's about an hour after I eat a meal, I can drop some of the spikes in my blood sugar up to 60 points. That's better than I can do with any medication. I've tried insulin. That's even better than I can do with insulin. Just walking an hour doesn't have to be fast. I just get on my treadmill, um, put my ear pods in, listen to something. Um, you can drop it up to six, uh, me up to 60 points. So if you eat a meal that you know you shouldn't, it may not be the healthiest, go for a walk after the meal. Another tip, number three, limit the meals at night. I figured, you know, for a while I come in, you know, hungry at night, so I would eat at night. But if I could limit that meal at night, I would change the, the process in my liver called gluconeogenesis and how the liver takes care of blood sugar. And I wouldn't have as many spikes in the morning. So I've really focused on eating my biggest meals at breakfast and lunch and making that evening meal just a small meal. Now that's not always possible. You still have to live life and things come up and you still might want to treat yourself occasionally. And when you do this, one thing that I found helpful, if you eat like you shouldn't at night and say, man, I ate more than I should. I don't want to have that insulin spike. What I try to do is I try to take a couple swigs or a couple teaspoons of apple cider vinegar doesn't taste so good, take a couple swigs of that, go for your walk, and that can help the spike not be as big in your body or as damaging. Um, apple cider vinegar um, has shown to slow the absorption, especially of your carbohydrates, because it's that carb load that really spikes your blood sugar. And if it's spiking at night and you're your body's changing, your, especially your circadian rhythms are changing, then you might have some spikes you really don't want to deal with. Now, those are just some practical tips. And the last one I really want to stress. So get a monitor, move more after you eat, limit your evening meals. If you do have a big evening meal, come up with a plan so it's not as damaging to you like apple cider vinegar or walking. And lastly, drink more water. Drink more water. That helps fill you up. It also helps move some of that sugar out of your body. So it helps every cell in the body. So try to focus on drinking more water. So those are some tips that might help those diabetics um, out there. Even if you're not diabetic, eating healthy, not eating big at night, drinking more water, smaller evening meal will help you as well. But I don't want you to forget this text in Colossians. Let's read that one more time. Colossians 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. So we want that peace that God gives us more than anything else. It will guard your hearts, will protect your brain from all this stress that's going on these days. We won't have to fear. We won't have to have anxiety. It's going to guard your hearts and minds. And it does this through Christ Jesus. So the peace of God is in Christ Jesus. That's the real path to healing. We find him as we look through the scriptures, as we pray, as we try to get to know him every single day of our life. That's the key to healing. That's the peace of God. That's what's going to guard your hearts from the stress and all the bad stuff that's going on in this world. We want peace. We don't want war. We don't want turmoil. So I'm hoping that will give you a little bit of encouragement today, not only from the stresses of the world, but also for the diabetics. Four tips for diabetics that might help you up. And I can't get over how much these these cell phones and these monitors. Modern medicine has a great place. And we're going to talk about the place for technology um, in medicine at some other point. Um, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. Leave your comments, especially if you have some tips on how to help others with diabetes. Because remember, this, this video, this site, we want to help others. And we help this by sharing. We help by encouraging. We help also by praying. If you want more resources, we have a worship blog, we have Bible studies, um, 
We are praying for each one of you and we want the body of Christ and others to come into the body of Christ and realize that true healing is not necessarily medicines. Um, it's not procedures, though God can use these things. It's not necessarily eating perfect or exercise perfect or moving person. God can use these, of course, but real healing and the big picture comes when we have Christ in our heart and let the Holy Spirit lead us and change us in all things acknowledging Him. So I hope this finds you well. And I'm Dr. James Markham. I'll be back very soon with another biblical prescription for life.